Good morning and welcome to Wells. Um, as you can probably tell, I am not Ethan Perkins. He um, unfortunately is at home, sick in the bed this weekend. Um, so I've been told we look a lot alike, so y'all can pretend that I'm Ethan this morning. Um, so on this third Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of joy. The last two Sundays, we have been reminded of the hope and expectation that Jesus is coming and the love that he brings to the world. Today, the pink candle represents the joy the world experienced at the coming birth of Jesus, the joy of a new baby coming to save us all. May we all remember this joy and carry it with us throughout this Advent season and beyond. We now light the candles of hope, love, and joy. We will now have the call to worship. Please stand as we share the opening sentences. Greetings, favored ones. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. Please share the prayer. O gracious Creator, we come to you in the power of the baby. Today make us angels, gathering up co-workers, train workers, house workers, yard workers, body workers, garbage workers, factory workers, classroom workers, building workers, and food workers to behold the miracle child who can take our spiritual thirst away forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing all verses of hymn number 240, 
Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Morning. morning. It's good to see you here this morning. If you are uh, excited and feel a little bit joyous today, then it, it's a perfect Sunday to feel that way. We, uh, we are joyous in the fact that we get to celebrate joy. And my friend in, in high school we used to date a girl named Joy, and we would always see her and go, J O Y. <laughs> so you have a little uh, village people moment there for you. But uh, we come to the time now in our service, we affirm our faith together. So if you choose to do so, please turn to page 883 as we look at this statement of the faith of the United Church of Canada. But it's a good statement for us here in America and Christians in general as well. Join me if you choose to. We're not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come to Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, and life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Take a few moments and pass the peace of Christ amongst yourself. <laughs>
Jason Reagan. So how's everybody this morning? We are, we are waiting on a young baby to, uh, to come forward. That We're going to do a little baby dedication this morning. And uh, it's a, they, they're on their way, said Grandma. All right. Well, this morning we're going to dedicate John Rory Lloyd, who was born September the 16th of this year, right here in Jackson. Uh, he is the son of Jason and Reagan Lloyd, and uh, some of you might recognize Reagan's name. She is the daughter of uh, Steve and Christine Norquist. Uh, John is the son of uh, Carl and Patty Schinkel, and uh, John and Brenda Lloyd. And uh, Rory is accompanied with uh, two siblings, uh, Alex, and, uh, or Alec, I should say, and uh, Josie. So if they would come forward this morning and come on. And family, if you would like to join here at the altar, you're welcome to do so. Reagan said I needed to be working out in order to hold this young man. <laughs> and he's a chunk. Well, my Elliot was, uh, was almost 10 pounds when he was born, so. He went, he went potty right as you called it. That's what oh, cool. <laughs> that means I don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, we changed it for you. Good, okay. good. Thank you very much. Smell good. <laughs> <laughs> he did in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. I could get used to this. As, the, as we dedicate you this morning, young man, I want to say that uh, this is the first time somebody other than Keith has dedicated one of the children from this family. And uh, there are a lot of firsts today. We had our first Piccadilly breakfast um, without Keith today. But uh, we know that his spirit lives on, and regardless of who is here doing the dedication, we believe that God and this altar never change, and it is the same. So, Reagan and Jason, I'll ask you this morning, as, uh, as you've done so well with these previous two and this beautiful young boy, do you all both promise to raise him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and seek to instill in him the values that will be prosperous for him as he lives his life in Christ? Yes. Good. And congregation, I ask you also, do you pledge to support and to be here for this young man as he grows in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, but also to help his parents, to pray for them, to guide them, to be a shoulder to cry on when their shoulders have been cried upon a botch? Mm -hmm. And if you so do say, so, we do. Thanks be to God. Well, in doing so, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You will be known as Rory, but you will also be known as Christian. Let's pray together. Most gracious God, it is a humbling thing to hold a little child. To hold a child with the future in his hands and in the twinkling of his eye. So be with this family, be with Jason and Reagan as they seek to be the parents that you've called them to be. And help us as the church, known as Wells, to set a good example. To seek to be there in times of trouble, but to seek to be there in times when things are going well. We thank you for this opportunity, and we dedicate this child to you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to take him for a little stroll. Okay. Y'all can go back to your seats. <laughs> it always used to make me nervous. Uh, 
get a pastor in Dallas that would do this. And he's got a grip on my thumb. So, uh, but I just want you to get a look at this young man because uh, something is very special about this. And as a person who was adopted, uh, I know something about people that have been unable to have a child in their dreams. Or maybe those that have lost a child. And uh, we don't take this, this lightly. This lady right here, she's only 25. <laughs> so as you think about this season of Christmas, what better time to think about a baby boy? Bouncing around. Probably not a better time to do it. How about birthdays and anniversaries? Do we have any? Yes, ma'am. Bless you, Pam. <laughs> and the only, the only reason I can say that is because my wife gets the same treatment. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jim. Sister Tuesday. Okay. Birthday. Billy. John, the 23rd, Captain Willie Collard made the first There you go. There you go. I can relate to that. Yeah. Others? Birthdays? I miss some. Yeah, see. My mom will be 75. Okay. All right. Steph. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, Craig. Sister Susan was forty died on the first. Okay. I see Diane's hand. Um the this last year, two birthdays. Okay. All right. Matthew. My mom's birthday was the third day. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, my arm is kind of just kind of dangling. That baby is heavy. All right, well, if there's not any more, then we'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. As we begin a time of prayer request, um, many of you know Ron Forsyth just has to be one of the nicest men that I've ever, ever met in this world. And uh, he was uh, admitted to the hospital last night. He's had some crud and just hadn't been able to shake it. <clears throat> some of you may be aware that uh, earlier this year he had a lung removed because it was found to have cancer. And uh, I know our pastor went by to see him after our men's prayer breakfast. Do you have an update? Do you have other prayer requests you'd like to share this morning? Yeah. Um, my niece is due for baby this year in February. She was admitted to the hospital yesterday, so she was in baby room distress, mm -hmm. and they're bringing her to specialist today, but it's pretty scary. Oh, man. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Stephanie.
We had a good time. I had the hiccups the whole time, but other than that, it was good. It was good. I, I tell you a quick story. Peanut butter helps me get rid of the hiccups, and, and BJ did not have any peanut butter at her house. It's, that's completely un-American. Um, but Matthew Arujo drove back to his house and picked up peanut butter and brought it to him. So I think it just has to be the fact that he's just recently gotten his license and he likes to drive. So, yeah. But uh, thank you, Diane. We've got some great kids. And speaking of, I want to, Matthew, uh, sitting on the back row there, is going to be having a procedure done uh, during the holidays, so we remember him. And also, uh, Turner Hayes is having his hostels out the day after Christmas, so remember him. Others that you have this morning. Yeah, Jim. Remember Nancy Watson in the hospice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, Sarah. You know, I go back to my college days, and I wish my exams had been on Sunday. <laughs> There's something holy about them. <laughs> yes. If if they would, would y'all want a blessing this morning? Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, let's sing "Blessed Be the Tie That Binds," and y'all come do our anniversary. Blessed be the tie. A lot of years here, isn't there? A lot of years. Let's pray together. Y'all want to, y'all want to slip y'all's hands down this way too, Billy? <laughs> there you go. God, what a day to, to see love not only that has come in the form of a baby, but love that has come down through couples who have been together for many years combined we thank you that we can celebrate love and that love is real it changes us from the inside out so for Billy and Catherine and Steve and Christine and Jerry and Pam we not only thank you that you brought them together as couples but that you brought them to this place that we know as well I think this morning very strongly of the words love always love and for that we're grateful holy spirit of god, holy spirit of god. you have blessed us each with love you have blessed us each with love for these three couples for these three couples we pray that that love will continue to grow In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless them as they travel many more years together. Bless them as they travel many more years together. In the name of Christ. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. As they make their way back to their seats, I'll ask you, if you would, just bow your head and let's be in a time of prayer, just a moment of silence, and I'll lead us. Let us pray. God, from the crying of a tiny babe to the tears rolling down the cheek of a, a couple Married for 40 years, 13 years, 20 years. There's something special about love. And to find it and to live it is an amazing thing. It really is all we have left in this world that can change us from within. 
It gives us heaven moments. And we remember those moments as we remember the prayer that your son taught us to pray and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One last item of interest that I have for you that I want to share with you is our Adopt-A-School uh, chairperson, Mary Lundgren, brought these in today. On Friday, we presented this uh, plaque with uh, 30 years of service to Galloway United, I mean, to Galloway Elementary. And uh, it's, uh, I guess we're partners with Galloway United as well, you know, in some way. But, uh, and, and this goes not just to, to Mary, but to every person who's worked over there and been a book buddy or taken time to be a part of that school. So, uh, Mary, thank you for bringing this. And then, uh, They also gave us this little nice uh, teardrop plaque. So uh, thank you all. And if you've ever been anything at Galloway, would you please stand? We owe these folks a round of applause, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand as we sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 249, There's a Song in the Air. Please remain standing as we share Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6, found on page 847 of the hymnal. <clears throat> when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing. Loving God, all things come from you, 
and the greatest gift of all comes from you, Christ our Lord. In this season of hope and joy and love and peace, may we be a people of peace and a people of generous hearts. Receive these gifts now, we pray, as we remember the gift to us. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. Bethlehem, 
Be not afraid, for there you'll find this blessed wood, a princely babe, sweet Jesus born, with thankful heart and joyful mind, the shepherds went this babe to find. And as God's angel had foretold, they found the Savior prize behold. Within a manger he was laid, and by his side the virgin maid, attending to the Lord. Good people, all this Christmas time, consider well and bear in mind what our good God for us has done in sending his beloved Son with Mary. It's just a sample of what you'll get tonight when you all come back. So thank you, Nancy, Kim, and choir, Jamie, and Margaret. It's good to have you all here. I invite you, if you will, to look on the back of your order of service at today's scripture for the early services message. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. This particular rendition is found from Eugene Peterson's The Message. And Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica and says, Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Jesus Christ, to live. Don't suppress the Spirit. Don't stifle those who have a word from the Master. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out anything tainted with evil. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. Put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Christmas is a time that most of us associate with family and friends and good feeling, food, beverages, laughter. For those who are religious... It's a time of reflection, celebration, affirmation, and today we encounter that word joy. They're all positive emotions, and in general, they put us in a more generous and a better frame of mind, even those Ebenezer Scrooges among us, which you'll hear more about next week. I think people are a little more open to others. 
a little more or less apt to tell people they're number one when somebody pulls in front of them when they're not supposed to or somebody goes a little too slow on the on-ramp to get onto the interstate. And maybe we get a little closer in touch with what we're supposed to be about all year round. You see, Christmas isn't just a day, and all days aren't the same. If we look real closely, we'll be reminded that the word Christmas spells his name. A number of years ago, I read a book. It was a very interesting book, John Grisham, the author, and it wasn't one of his legal thrillers. It was called Christmas with the Cranks. After faithfully and happily celebrating Christmas their entire lives, Luther and Nora Frank, with their daughter in Peru working for the Peace Corps, is not coming home, and so the Cranks decide we're going to take a cruise to the Caribbean for Christmas. It happened as Luther was in a store one blustery Chicago evening before Christmas, and he saw this alluring travel agency poster of what the Caribbean would be like. The glow of the sun on the Caribbean cruise was just what they needed since Christmas was going to be a little different. Nora, pretty reluctant about it at first, but eventually she warms up to the idea. You see what I did there? Okay, just checking. Some of you are nodding already. But then, just like Bewitched and that wicked woman, Gladys Kravitz, their neighbors find out and they are aghast. And Mr. Busybody, Vic Frohmeyer, just has it out with Luther because Luther refuses to put his illuminated snowman on top of the roof. You see, Hemlock Street, and that's a great name for a street, is famous for this and has won numerous contests put on by the local newspaper for their Christmas decorations. The battle of wits between the cranks and their neighbors quickly escalates, threatening the harmony of the community and even Christmas itself. Then they get a call from Blair. She's coming home. And now the cranks have less than 24 hours to get their house ready for Christmas. After subtly giving everybody, including Blair and Enrique, who happens to be Blair's fiance, this half-hearted toast, Luther tries with all his might to convince Nora to still go on the cruise. But she's so disgusted with him that she just shakes her finger and says, no, I'm not going. So Luther slips out of the house and goes over to the shell house where Bev lives. Bev had had cancer and it was in remission, but now she's just found out that it's returned and it may be the last holiday she has with her husband. Luther insists that she and her husband go on the cruise. At first they say, no, we couldn't do that. But eventually they agree. And Luther has his holiday spirit renewed. He realizes that skipping Christmas wasn't really the best idea. He was surprised by the joy that he had found. I don't know about you, but Advent seems to go quickly for me. Almost as quickly as Lent. Four short weeks, and then we're into Christmas, and then boom, it's gone. It almost seems like you barely get your Christmas decorations up, and then you're taking them down again. At least for me, the boxes are still out, and don't tell Leanne I said that. (laughs) Think about it. The first week of Advent, what did we hear? The lectionary text reminded us that we are sinful people, and we really need a Savior. In the second week of Advent, we're provided with the hope, as John shouted, and if you stay for the 11 o'clock service, I'm sure you'll hear more about John shouting at 11. And now we continue our journey along this Advent road, at least what seems like some kind of traffic jam. It isn't one of those traffic jams that makes you want to lose your temper, though. 
It's more like the rare moments when you're rushing from one place to the next and you suddenly have to stop because you've been ambushed by the Holy Spirit. And whatever it is, whether it's a small child, whether it's a glint of that significant other in your family, in your life, or maybe it's some news that you never thought you would hear. And all of a sudden you find your heart skipping a little bit faster because you've been surprised by joy. So what I say to you this morning is sit with that message and savor it. Look at those Christmas cards. Think about those people in your life that really, really mean something that for whatever reason... We only hear from for once a year. Even with Facebook and all the things that it affords. There's something about this season. The Savior is coming. And there will be soon enough labor. <clears throat> will begin and everything will speed up again. But for now, rest in the knowledge and the joy that the Lord has sent good news to the oppressed. To bind up the brokenhearted and to pro proclaim Liberty to the captives. Let us sing praises like the psalmist and let us pray without ceasing. As Paul tells us in this scripture for the day. I invite you to savor this week. And may you lead others to savor this week as well. Too often we want to skip the birth and just go right into the unwrapping of presents and thinking about, well, what did I get? You know, I can still feel the enthusiasm. The first time I walked into my room, my parents' living room, and there was that Western flyer. I think it was the best Christmas present I ever got. So as you journey through Advent, as we journey through Advent, be reminded that it is a journey. And there's things along the way that we need to stop and smell the roses. Prepare yourself each day to hear a new word from God. And not to necessarily be shaking your fist at God because maybe something didn't go the way you wanted it. You can still find joy, I can promise you that. Sometimes we're far from home and we feel a distance and cut off from everything. And if you read the Isaiah portion of the lectionary today, you find that the Israelites knew what it was like for their community to be ruined, to be exiles in a distant land. Their homeland was deserted. And Isaiah's words bring comfort to them. Allow God's words to be comfort for you. When you feel covered by ashes... Know that you've been given a crown to replace them. Because our mourning has been replaced with joy, we can point others to the good news and joy that they may have as well. In Max Lucado's book, Anxious for Nothing, he writes that Paul did not tell the Philippians to be happy. Happiness depends upon our circumstances, and those circumstances are fleeting from time to time. If you know anything about the book of Philippians, you know that Paul wrote it while he was in prison. I don't think you can be happy very much in prison. Your circumstances certainly don't seem like they can make you happy. Fortunately, I've never been in prison, so I don't know. But what I find about Paul as I read his letters he was joyful because he was in Christ. Joy comes as a gift from God. And as a sign of God's presence, I think joy transcends our circumstances. As my favorite writer and theologian Frederick Buechner says, happiness turns up more or less when you'd expect it to. A good marriage, a rewarding job, a pleasant vacation... But joy, on the other hand, he says, is as notorious, unpredictable as the one who bequeaths it. Sometimes I think 
fact is stranger than fiction. A number of years ago when I was pastoring at Calvary Baptist Church here in Jackson, I read an article in the Clarion Ledger, which, by the way, my subscription is going up to $51. I'm not happy about it. But I clipped this out of an old Clarion Ledger, and it was an AP story from Denver, Colorado. Stan had heard about a church in Denver and a family facing a rather bleak holiday. Medical bills had robbed them of any extras, and they wouldn't even have enough money to get a Christmas tree. And if you know anything about Christmas, you can't have Christmas without a tree. I mean, it's just right up there next to the manger scene, right? So Stan's pastor asked him if he would get a tree and take it to this family. He said, sure, I'll be glad to. So Stan and his son Jay are headed up into the Colorado Rockies in a family pickup. And all of a sudden, the truck skids off this icy road and hits a boulder, shatters the windshield, and the teenage boy is covered with glass and slivers are on him. He's in shock and just got this crash trauma. If you've ever been in a head-on collision, you may know what I'm talking about. But the dad, Stan, was uninjured but was shaken up a lot because of what had happened to his son. And the writer of the article said that close to 200 cars passed them by that day. Nobody would stop until one couple stopped. A gentle, dark-haired woman took the boy and put her in her car to comfort him while her husband and another person who stopped once somebody else stopped helped him move the truck to the side of the road. Then the couple drove the father and son back home and then left without really identifying themselves. Like most of us, we would be discouraged that we didn't have the opportunity to do what we had set out to do, to get that tree for that family. And Stan was discouraged, but later in the month, his pastor asked him if he would deliver a food basket that they had collected for this particular family, and he said, I would be glad to. Stan found the house and could hardly find his speech when the door opened. For standing there before him was the same couple that had stopped to help him on that mountain road when so many other people had passed him by. You see, there's a strange power in love. Some folks call it amazing coincidence. I don't. Some people call it divine providence. I do. Because I believe with all my heart and I choose to think that love has its own power. And that can change people and can change things. And maybe sometimes those things are better left unanalyzed and to take them for what they're worth. Maybe we should enjoy the wonder of it all. For whenever we choose to be kind, we just might be surprised by joy. I received some great news this week. I can't tell you what it is, but I'm happy. I'm more than happy. I'm joyful. I found this, and I conclude with these words. My joy, the air that I breathe, my joy in God, I believe. For God moves me. My joy, the blood in my veins, my joy flows in your holy name. I'm not a mountain but you still move me. My joy is heavenly bliss. My joy, the pleasure I miss. You move me. As longing becomes love, everything changes, and joy will find its way. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's probably not a better time of year for me uh, to take communion other than uh, maybe Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday, or Easter Sunday, but to 
come to this altar with hope, with love, with joy, with peace. And to take that which was broken for us, that which was sacrificed for us, that which was poured out on a hill called Calvary, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Join me as we pray. God, you have given us these wonderful gifts of bread and wine that we may partake of these things and remember your son. That in remembering your son, we remember everyone that's come before us, everyone that is now, and everyone that is to come, who comes in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. As we come to this altar to kneel this day, help us to find the joy. Help us to be surprised by the joy. Not happiness, but to truly find joy. We ask it in the name of Christ. I'm going to ask Rusty and Catherine if y'all would come. And, um,
you stand as we sing one verse of Good Christian Friends Rejoice, number 224. Mm -hmm. 